Good afternoon, good morning, and welcome. I'm Ken Cuccinelli, the senior official performing the duties of the Deputy Secretary in the Department of Homeland Security. And I invite you all, thank you, sir. I invite you all to go ahead and take a seat. It is always an honor to welcome new citizens to the United States. It's even more special doing so the week we celebrate our 244th uh, anniversary of the Independence Day of our great country. Um, add to that the historic venue here at the White House and special guests we have for this ceremony, and it'll be an occasion our new citizens will always remember for the rest of their lives. Um, it's now my great pleasure to introduce Acting Secretary of Homeland Security, Chad Bull. Well, good morning, and thank you, Mr. Vice President, for hosting us here today. And it's certainly a pleasure to be here with Secretary Chow, who herself is a proud naturalized citizen, uh, Joe Edlow. <laughs> Joe Edlow, who is running uh, U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services uh, today. Uh, and good morning and congratulations on becoming the newest citizens of our great country. Well, <laughs> while the oath uh, that you will swear today uh, you all have completed one of the most important journeys of your lives, and that's becoming an American citizen. The fabric of America is woven from a variety of backgrounds, races, religions, and creeds, each thread made up of unique individuals such as yourselves coming together to form an even greater nation. Among the 16 new citizens here today are individuals from 12 countries across the globe, from our Canadian neighbors to the north, Chile to the south, Philippines to the west, and Turkey to the east. The binding factor that we all share as Americans, however, is our common belief in the ideals enshrined in our Constitution. These ideals, ideals including freedom, liberty, and the rule of law allow us to come together as one people. These ideals are the foundation of what makes our country great, and the citizens that uphold these values and the commitment to them are our way of life or what make America so special. Since our country's inception, naturalized citizens have lived, worked, prayed, and even fought and died side by side with their fellow Americans. Many have made incredible contributions to our society through hard work and appreciation for our ideals and self-sacrifice. Names like Alexander Hamilton, Andrew Carnegie, Albert Einstein, Nikola Tesla, and Elon Musk have graced the pages of US history, each of them immigrants to our great country who have seized the opportunity to maximize their potential. For centuries, our republic has fostered an environment in which an individual is given the opportunity to make their own choices, free from the unfair and deadly policies placed upon them by dictators and authoritarians. Today, you need only need to look at Secretary Chow or the millions of other naturalized citizens who are working to better our country each and every day as examples of the freedom our country provides. As the Acting Secretary of Homeland Security, I have the privilege and the honor of overseeing our country's immigration and naturalization system. And it has been one of my greatest honors of my career to welcome hundreds of thousands of new citizens to the American family each year. You all exemplify the success that comes with a strong, fair immigration system that maintains its integrity. And while each of you has reached an incredible milestone here today, it is just one chapter in your American story. It is up to you how the rest of the pages will be written. So again, congratulations on this tremendous accomplishment. And now I'd like to introduce Staff Sergeant Edmund Milley, who will lead us in singing our national anthem. Please rise. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, 
gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? Please be seated. Thank you, Staff Sergeant Milley, for that beautiful rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Joseph Edlow. I am currently the Deputy Director for Policy at U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, and it's an honor to be here with you all today on behalf of USCIS. The song we just heard, our national anthem, was penned by Francis Scott Key, who was inspired to write it after seeing the American flag still waving after the British attack on Fort McHenry in Baltimore, my hometown, during the War of 1812. Our flag tells our story. It is a story of a nation whose founders knew the value of hard work and perse uh, per perseverance, of idealism and opportunity. Many of you have similar stories of hard work and dedication that, you have, that have led you here today, and I congratulate you on those efforts. Now I have the privilege of calling the countries of the naturalization candidates. Candidates, when you hear your country of nationality called, please stand and remain standing. Canada. Chile, Cote d'Ivoire, Dominican Republic, El Salvador, Ethiopia, Ghana, Kenya, New Zealand, Nigeria, Philippines, and Turkey. Mr. Cuccinelli, I present to you 16 candidates representing 12 countries who have applied to become citizens of the United States. Each of the candidates has been interviewed by an officer of USCIS and, unless exempted by the law, has demonstrated the ability to read, write, and speak words in the English language. Each has demonstrated his or her knowledge and understanding of the history and the principles and form of the government of the United States. Mr. Cuccinelli, I recommend that these candidates be administered the oath of allegiance, thereby admitting them to United States citizenship. So candidates for naturalization, if you would raise your right hand and repeat after me. I hereby declare, I hereby declare on, oath, on oath that I absolutely and entirely Renounce and, abjure Renounce and abjure all allegiance and fidelity, allegiance and fidelity. To, any to any foreign prince, potentate, potentate. State, or state or sovereignty, of whom or which, whom or which. I have heretofore been a subject or citizen that I will support and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same that I will bear arms on behalf of the United States when required by the law, that I will perform non-combatant service in the armed forces of the United States when required by the law. That I, will work that I will perform work of national importance, of national importance under, civilian under civilian direction when required by the law. And that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation 
or purpose of evasion. So help me God. Congratulations. You all are now citizens of the United States of America. And if you would please remain standing, uh, as your first act as new United States citizens, I would ask you to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, we'll all say it together. You will not repeat after me. We will say it at the same time. Uh, I will just get us started. So if everyone would please stand, face the flag, and cover your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please take your seats. On behalf of the USCIS and the entire United States of America, it is my great honor to be the first person to refer to you as my fellow Americans. In taking the oath of allegiance to support and defend the Constitution of the United States, you've gained important new rights and responsibilities along with ownership of America's future. I hope this day inspires you to fully exercise those rights and to meet your responsibilities uh, as, that accompany your new status as citizens of the United States. Our next speaker, is U.S. Secretary of Transportation Elaine Chao. This is her second cabinet position. Previously, she served as U.S. Secretary of Labor, the first Asian American woman in American history to be appointed to the President's cabinet, and certainly the first to be appointed twice. She herself is an immigrant to this country, as you heard earlier from Secretary Wolf. Secretary Chao has a distinguished career in private, public, and nonprofit sectors. She is a graduate of Harvard Business School and the recipient of 37 honorary degrees, doctorate degrees. She is the eldest of six daughters and exemplifies the opportunities that are so abundant in America. And it is her history and accomplishment that make her truly one of the most unique speakers at naturalizations that we have ever had. And it is my honor to introduce Secretary Chow. Thank you so much. Welcome to the White House. Isn't this special? I came to America when I was eight years old, and I got my citizenship at age 19. My family's journey is one that I'm sure you've heard a lot about from many other people, because you share the same experiences. My late mother, Ruth Mulan Chu Chow, and my father, Dr. James S.C. Chow, met during the Chinese Civil War. At the height of the Civil War, they separately left their homeland and after a two-year search, my father finally found my mother, convinced her parents to allow them to marry, and started a family. My father became the youngest sea captain at the age of 29. He took a national examination, scored number one, broke all the records, and this gave him the chance to come to America, but only him. So my mother, my two sisters, and I were left behind. Our family was separated for three years before he was able to get us. We came aboard a cargo ship because that was all he could afford at the time. When our ship sailed into New York Harbor, we were filled with happiness, but we were also very anxious, wondering whether we would ever survive in this new country. Our initial years in America were very challenging. I don't need to tell you that. But my parents never lost faith in the promise of America and that America was a land of opportunity and that our futures would be bright. Each of you come with your own stories of coming to America. I am here to affirm to you that your hard work and sacrifices are well worth it. This is a wonderful country 
with so many opportunities. Congratulations on becoming an American citizen and being able to carry that precious blue passport whenever you leave our borders. Now, it's my great honor and pleasure to introduce the one that you really came to listen to, our great featured speaker, Vice President Mike Pence. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> the Vice President is a man of great faith, compassion, and experience, who along with our second lady, Karen Pence, has devoted his life to serving others. He wanted to be here today to welcome you, to congratulate you, and celebrate this great day with you. So please join me in giving a rousing welcome to the Vice President of the United States, Mike Pence. Thank you. Well, thank you all for that warm welcome, and it is a great honor for me to be here on such a special day to welcome 16 new Americans to the American family. Give yourselves a round of applause. And it's an honor to be here with some extraordinary public servants as well. Uh, you just heard about her personal story, but she has done an extraordinary uh, work for this nation, serving multiple administrations. And um, I hope she proves to each and every one of you that this is the land of opportunity. Would you join me in thanking the 18th Secretary of Transportation, Secretary Lane Chow. Thank you so much. And also, I want to thank uh, Acting Secretary Chad Wolf and Acting Deputy Secretary Ken Cuccinelli and the Deputy Director Joe Enlow. I hope you could see from where you were seated the emotion on their faces as they had the privilege of playing a role in welcoming you to the United States of America. These are men of integrity who love this country, and, uh, and they love to welcome new Americans. Give them all a round of applause, will you? They're very special people. And let me also extend congratulations from another friend of mine. I just left him a few minutes ago. We were celebrating some great news in America, but I know he'd want me to extend his congratulations to each and every one of you. So to all the new Americans in the room, I extend congratulations and welcome from the 45th President of the United States of America, President Donald Trump. And on behalf of the President and the First Lady, welcome to the White House. It's an honor to have each one of you here for such an important milestone in your life and in the life of this nation. There's a, no naturalization ceremony that ever occurs in this country that isn't of enormous importance to the life of this nation. Because uh, apart from our Native American brothers and sisters, the reality is that all of us came here from somewhere else Truth is, my own story, and just two short generations ago involved immigration. Some were brought here against their will. Some came to this continent to seek freedom and liberty. And now, from all different points on the globe, all of you have joined that journey. And we know that you are going to do your families and your nation proud as American citizens. So I welcome you once again. And I'm told that uh, this class uh, comes from 12 countries across five continents. It was inspiring to see the range of backgrounds being standard during introductions. But you also come from just about every walk of life. A security officer, a cashier, a pilot, a journalist, a contractor, a graphic designer, just to name a few. And now you've brought those talents to the United States of America. And uh, let me just say, on behalf of all the people of this country, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for bringing your lives, your experience uh, to enrich the greatest nation on earth. 
We're grateful to each and every one of you for embracing America and becoming American citizens. From those diverse uh, backgrounds, though, you had one common aspiration. You left hearth and home, friends and families. You left the familiar for the unfamiliar. You're part of the, the long American story that uh, we will celebrate in just a few short days. And uh, you come at a time, you come at a time of uh, unique challenges in America and across the wider world as we deal with an unprecedented pandemic. But I think uh, the world has seen and you will continue to be a part of a story that demonstrates the resilience and the strength of the American people. Because as the jobs numbers testify today, nearly 5 million jobs created in the last month, we're opening up America again. And you're in the midst of a great American comeback. And you'll be a part of that. Our history now is your story. And by bringing your talents and your energies and your enthusiasm and your devotion so eloquently articulated, uh, not just in the oath that you took, but in the pledge that we all recited. We know you're going to play your own individual part in, in making a, a stronger and more prosperous America. And it's actually, it's, it's good to be with you as we're just a few days away from uh, celebrating our Independence Day, 244 years ago. Um, a group of Americans gathered uh, in Philadelphia and signed a document pledging their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor behind a set of ideals, a commitment that all are created equal, even though at that time in the life of our nation, some were not considered that way. We committed to a more perfect union. And each and every year since, our nation, our nation has, has strived for a more perfect union. And I know with the diversity of backgrounds that each of you bring, you will enrich America and be a part of our steady march toward that more perfect union. And I thank you. I truly do. But you may not know that 244 years ago today was also a momentous day. July the 2nd, 1776, was actually the day uh, that a man who would become our first vice president said that we'd be celebrating our independence. You may not have actually known this, but it was on July the 2nd, 1776, that Congress actually declared independence by adopting a resolution. And uh, uh, John Adams, our first vice president, I'm partial to vice presidents. <laughs> Actually wrote in a letter to his wife, Abigail, quote, the second day of July, 1776, will be the most memorable epoch in the history of America. He said, I am apt to believe that it will be celebrated by succeeding generations with great anniversary festivals, with pomp and parade, shows and games, sports, guns, bells, bonfires, and illuminations. Well, actually, we celebrate that two days from now, but now you're a part of the great and storied history of July the 2nd. So welcome. <laughs> 244 years after that courageous decision, the liberty that was won, now you're a part of America's steady march. And, um, and I just wanna, I wanna commend you I want to commend you for uh, having the courage to reach for your dreams and to make the sacrifices necessary to become part of the greatest nation in the history of the world. And your stories are truly inspiring. Um, like a man who came to this country 16 years ago from the Philippines. And his family's already making contributions to this country. One of his sons, I'm told, serves as an Army medic at Fort Carson in Colorado. Another of his sons is a cargo specialist in the Army Reserve. What a great family. So today, Orlando Medrano is an American and a proud father, to say the least. Stand up and give those boys my best. And I was also inspired by the testimony of a woman who's here today who said, and I quote, that as an American, I can travel, I can go to school, I can vote, I can achieve my goals and my dreams. In a word, becoming an American citizen for me is freedom. And those inspiring words tell me that she has chosen well and America has done well by welcoming Fatumata Watara.
as a new American citizen. Where are you, Fatuma Tan? Thank you so much. Beautiful words. Welcome. And at this moment in the life of our nation, it's also deeply meaningful to hear the story of a man from Nigeria who works as a security officer and had a dream of becoming a police officer in the United States, a dream that we hope he pursues, a great and noble profession. Those who serve and protect our communities are the best among us. So allow me to thank and to congratulate Olan Ray Waju Akin Ramey. Congratulations. I'm just glad I got through those great names, those beautiful <laughs> names. And thank you. Thank you for your patience. Um, but frankly, all your stories are inspiring. Uh, all your stories are now part of the American story. And, uh, and I must tell you, the reason why I've made this uh, a bit of a tradition since becoming your vice president is because it's, a, it's part of my story, too. The reality is that um, just like you had the courage to step forward, to come to America and to go through the process of becoming American citizens, my grandfather did the same. In fact, uh, I'll never forget the uh, day that I was inaugurated as the 48th Vice President of the United States. I was sitting up on the platform, and uh, people have asked me since what I thought about at that time. My wife at my side, our three children, and um, I honestly couldn't stop thinking about my grandfather. You see, he came to this country, stepped off onto Ellis Island on April 11, 1923. Um, he took the train to New York City. He moved to Chicago, Illinois. He drove a bus for 40 years. He raised uh, a precocious redhead who would become my mother, he married a salesman, and moved to a small town in southern Indiana. And they built everything that matters. Uh, a family, a, a business, and a good name. And uh, that day of Inauguration Day, I couldn't help. I couldn't help but think of my grandfather and what he must have been thinking, looking down from glory. You see, I was actually named after him. I'm Michael Richard Pence, and he was Richard Michael Cawley. I've actually been in Ireland to, the, to see the house he grew up in with 10 brothers and sisters. The house itself wasn't more than two rooms with a thatch roof in Ireland. And the legend in our family is that uh, my great-grandmother managed to get him a one-way ticket to America. And she told him, you have to go because there's a future there for you. And I was part of that future. My three brothers and two sisters the same and now his uh, great-grandchildren. Great-grandchildren are also living the American dream, but it all happened because he made the decision to go, to leave hearth and home behind. He wouldn't see his mother for 25 years, but he did it, and I believe he did it with, a, uh, with, a, with faith in this country, faith in the boundless opportunities in America, and also with an aspiration and a hope for the children and the grandchildren that would follow. And I'll be forever in his debt, but I'm also a debtor to America. I'm a debtor to America that made good the promise, that put my grandfather on that boat and brought him across. And I want to say to each and every one of you, wherever you have come from, you are now Americans. And America will make good on our promise to each and every one of you boundless opportunity for all. So go out and grab that dream. But as I close, let me say to, on this day, when you become citizens of the freest and most prosperous nation in the history of the world, there's a Bible verse that I've long cherished. It reads, to whom much is given, much will be required. And as you embrace the responsibilities of uh, citizenship and the privileges. I, I hope you also find a way to give back for all that you've been given on this day. Raise a great family. Build a business. 
serve in law enforcement, even put on the uniform of the United States, be a teacher, volunteer at a local service club, or run for office. Find a way to serve. Find a way to give back. Live out the oath that you just recited to this country in your everyday lives. And I promise you, everything that you give to America, you will receive beyond anything you could ask or imagine back. You've inherited a legacy of liberty that generations of Americans have paid for with their lives. And so use it well and do your part. And finally, like that Irishman I was talking about, and like each and every one of you, keep dreaming big. There are no dreams too big in the land of the free and the home of the brave. You work hard. You play by the rules. The sky's the limit. So congratulations to 16 new Americans. May God bless you, and may God bless your new home, the United States of America. can all sit. It'll be brief for some of you. <clears throat> and I appreciate the Vice President's inspiring remarks and Secretary Chow's as well. At this time, we have the privilege of presenting you with your naturalization certificates. All right. Now I will call your names one at a time and uh, would ask you to come up, uh, shake Secretary Wolf's hand or elbow bump. Yes. Um, and Joe Edlow will have your naturalization certificate. And uh, Joe, do these need to be signed? Or are they already signed? You, you, you will sign it yourself. It'll be your, the last step in the process uh, when you sign your own uh, naturalization certificate. So uh, I will call you one at a time. Um, and once you're done, you can return to your seat. Nigatu Bahiru Goba. <laughs> All right. Betty Schellengott Lychena. Congratulations. Juan Carlos Gutierrez Zepeda. Congratulations. Congrats, Juan. Well done. Congratulations. <laughs> so congratulations in the age of COVID here. <laughs> Michelle Kofi Ba. Michelle Marie Eviard. Congratulations. Well done, Michelle. <laughs> Sharp elbows. Uh, Dora Ivana Lemus Tobar. Sania Caracus. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Yasmin Gabriela Rivera Marino. Congratulations. 
Juen, Joy, Paraiso, Villalone. <laughs> Orlando uh, Maralit Medrano. Congratulations. Congratulations. Benia Thomas Ugola. Fatumata Utara Epsi Utara. Congratulations. Congratulations. Olan Riwayu Waremu Akinrame. Congratulations. Maria Stoyanovich Nakova. Congratulations. Good job. Uh, Gina now. Tamaru Alamar. Congratulations. Congratulations. Good job. Congratulations. Elvira Josefina Mendoza Santos. Congratulations. Good job. I want to thank all of you for being here today to celebrate this very special day with your loved ones, uh, all the family and friends who came. We're going to, uh, we've finished our photos, so we're concluding um, the day and we'll finish with a final congratulations to our 16 new Americans. Legitimate hooting at the White House. Yes, congratulations. You all have a wonderful day and a happy July 4th. I hope it has deeper meaning for you than any year before. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you.